It's Christ serving them assassin Troops stay shining Bussin' on you wizards so the troops stay kind Christ serving them assassin Troops stay shining Bussin' on you wizards so the troops stay kind It's Christ serving them assassin Troops stay shining Bussin' on you wizards so the troops stay kind It's Christ serving them assassin Troops stay shining Bussin' on you wizards so the troops stay climbing. What's up, everybody? Welcome in again. Welcome in, Christ Servative Assassin, your anti PC live stream community where we expose lies and exalt truth. And so we're going to get into it tonight. Uh, tonight is episode 14, trying to push that contoon out. Tonight is uh, slavery. That's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, Western European, uh, Eurocentric white race domination. Nope. False. And so, of course, appreciate all the support. Uh, Got to give shouts out to the wifey, Russell fam, Big Bear, G1 fam, Cross Culture, and of course, uh, Joe, the caffeinated assassin, all legends, and appreciate all the support. So like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, hit me with those comments, and I'll try to get to those as we go along. What's up, Joe? See you there. Chetrancolo, see you guys there. Appreciate you tuning in tonight. It's going to be fun. Kier, see you there. Appreciate it, guys. And uh, so, as I said, tonight we're going to be talking about slavery and we're going to keep pushing this content out. Um, uh, we're going for five streams and five nights. Uh, so that tomorrow night and uh, Tuesday night, we're going to be kicking out some flat earth stuff. And then uh, I got a couple other things dialed in uh, for the end of the week, uh, this coming week. Uh, one of the one of our topics are going to be I don't have a name for it yet, but we're going to talk about how. Uh, the black community is how they're manipulated into uh, into propagating the narrative of racism, racism in our culture, something like that. But I'll come up with a clever name for it and we'll get to that. But uh, important observation. But uh, of course, tonight slavery. So let's get into it. You know, uh, most people, uh, their perception of slavery, at least uh, in the United States, is that uh Slavery was a, you know, a Eurocentric white race domination of African people in a recent time interval of about 400 years or so. And of course, that is a false perception. And uh, that's what we want to do is we want to correct the false perception. I mean, we're in the business of exposing lies and exalting truth. And, you know, this this false perception is generated by a whole host of retarded people. Uh, on both sides of the race line, black people, white people, you, you know, you got people like Eric you know, Michael Eric Dyson, uh, professor at Georgetown University, who is nothing more than a race baiting race divider. I mean, he'll get up there and say, and he'll say, well, you just can't stand to see a sophisticated, intelligent black man. And be like, no, no, not at all. I like it in sophisticated, intelligent black men. You know, I'm a fan of Ben Carson. I'm a fan of Thomas Sewell. I'm a fan of uh, black men who can be sophisticated and intellectual and, you know, got their, uh, uh, got their, truth in order or truth is a priority to them. And so Eric, uh, Michael Eric Dyson is nothing more than a race baiter. He's a race divider. And on top of that, you know, he's an arrogant prick. I mean, if I'm going to be honest with you, I think I got a picture of him here and you've probably seen this guy on, you know, CNN and all these different places, but uh, I'll pull a picture of, and it's, I'm not just going to single out this guy. Cause there's a bunch of them. I mean, you know, the likes, uh, Al Sharpton, uh, Jesse Jackson. Uh, this is Michael Eric Dyson here. And so you got these guys and, you know, the, you know, the, the thing that's irritating is, as I said, you know, I'm all about, you know, seeing, you know, strong black men, intellectual, sophisticated. What I can't stand is to see black men use their platform and their intellectual resources to create a victim mentality in the hearts and minds of the black community. Uh, that's retarded. And, you know, people that do that, they're part of the problem. They're not helping. They do it under the pretense that somehow they're helping. Uh, they do it under the pretense of civil rights and they're helping it, but they're not helping. They're creating a victim, uh, a victim culture and a victim culture doesn't help anybody. And we've talked about that in the past, of course. And then you have guys like, uh, you know, Sean, the Cracker King, who is just another retarded race baiter, white dude, by the way, who pretends to be black and an advocate of the black community. In fact, he received a scholarship, I think, from the Oprah Winfrey Foundation that was uh, for African-American students exclusively to go to, uh, I believe it was a black school, maybe not. But uh, anyways, it was, a, it was a college scholarship that was for, uh, that was to be awarded to exclusively an African-American 
but he's a poser. He's a white dude. I got a picture of him. And, uh, I mean, this guy's about as pathetic as you can get. I mean, just, you know, just be yourself, bro. You know what I'm saying? So here he is. This is Sean. I call him the Cracker King. There he is now pretending to be black, you know, got his Malcolm X thing going on or whatever. But there's his pick, you know, his fifth grade pick or whatever right there next to him. Just a little curly headed white kid. That's the truth. That's the reality of who this guy is. And so, uh, I mean, it just looks like, you know, we got a cracker in the Cocoa Puffs. I mean, that's what's going on. And so, you know, of all the historical horrors that we could talk about, and there's plenty that we could talk about, there are none that are as narrowly construed and thought of in such localized terms as slavery. You know, slavery is perceived as, you know, a recent American white on black crime. Uh, but that's simply not the case when you talk about the scope of slavery. And, you know, there's something to say about American slavery, of course, and its place in sort of the historical development of slavery. But you have to understand the historical development of slavery in order to place what happened in the United States in its proper context. And we'll get into more on that later. But in case you missed it, slavery was abolished in the United States in 1863. It's called, you know, the, emancipa the, 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 the uh, Emancipation of Proclamation. You know, slavery was abolished and the Civil War ended in 1865. And, you know, we'll talk about the artificial connection between slave, slavery and racism as we go forward. But uh, what's up, Brother Joe? I see you there. But uh, uh, suffice it to say for now that uh, racism, for the most part, in our communities is not even a thing. I mean, you know, sure, there's always idiots. You know, there's always bad apples. And sure, there's some very small, obscure pockets of racist type groups. But they're all idiots. They're all morons. They're social rejects. Nobody likes them. They're all retarded. I mean, if you went to, you know, your local Walmart and your convenience store and you tried to get out there and you tried to push some sort of uh, uh, what you would call racist propaganda or something like that. I mean, people would stone you because people are over it. I mean, they're over it. R r racism is stupid. Everybody knows it. It's for the most part, not even a thing in our communities. But yet these left-wing radical retards and social justice warriors and identity identity politic freaks they constantly keep generating this false narrative of racism and it's all retarded and so you know the racism narrative and the racial divide is perpetuated as i said by the leftist propaganda machine that's what they do and the reason is is because they're trying to divide us they're trying to divide people socially to accomplish their nefarious ends um What's up, wife? Yes, you. And, uh, you know, as I said, people on the street, you know, you know, I, you know, I got a lot of social in interactions. I operate in a, in, in a number of different social contexts and I never bump into just, you know, like racist retards. I mean, for the most part, they're just, you know, they're people that would sort of maintain any sort of a racist ideology. They're very obscure. It's almost non non-existence, and you know they're they're retards and social rejects, and nobody likes them. Nobody wants to be their friend. Nobody wants to hang out with them, and you know, um, the you know people are just over that stuff. I mean, it's been you know a hundred and sixty years since slavery was abolished in, in the United States. It's been about sixty years since the civil rights movement took place, and you know since we did away with Jim Crow laws and all that kind of nonsense. And, you know, and this, this narrative is that, have, that is generated of, you know, this sort of systematic racism in the United States, it's false, it's nonsense, and it's propagated, as I said, by nefarious people to accomplish nefarious ends. And these people don't care about the black community. They don't care about minority communities. It's all a front. And, you know, black folks, if you fall for this junk, what will end up happening is your mind will be enslaved and essentially you'll be living on, you know, the leftist liberal plantation through slavery of the mind. Anyways, so back to slavery, you know, slavery, you know, is an affliction that has been suffered by the entire human race across the entire earth almost since the beginning of time. You know, in, in one sense, the history of the world is the history of slavery. You know, at least, you know, slavery has always been a part of the historical development of the world, as far back almost to the beginning of history. And, you know, to limit slavery to one race and one country over a few hundred years is to minimize 
the magnitude of the trage tragedies involved. And, you know, and it's criminal because what it does is it evidences that there is people that do that. It evidences that there's no real concern, but only an ax to grind to accomplish an end that is completely unrelated to slavery. And that's what these, you know, leftist weirdos do and the people that finance them, by the way. And so why is there such a provincial view, view of slavery? You know, why? understate an evil that has plagued mankind for thousands of years. Why pretend that slavery is something that happened exclusively in, exclusively in the United States, a crime that was exclusively perpetrated against black people by white people? That is false. It's a false narrative. And so why understate? And by the way, slavery is evil. It's morally reprehensible. And by the way, what we're talking about tonight is we're talking about slavery from a historical perspective, not a theological perspective. You know, other than simply to say, you know, theologically speaking, slavery is grossly immoral. And so, but why understate such an evil? You know, well, let me tell you why. The evil of slavery is not the real concern by these people who want to localize it and make it and, and couch it in provincial terms. The people that do this stuff. They don't care about people that are being enslaved. You know, the real issue is how historical evil is has become capital used to manipulate others for a particular agenda. That's what they do. That's what they do. They take a historical evil, which they don't care about the evil that is being propagated. What they do is they use it as capital to try and manipulate people to accomplish a wicked agenda. And, you know, misconstruing, misconstruing slavery to appear to be a particularly American or a particularly white crime against black people, what it does is it greatly enhances the ability to, to formulate what you might call an ideological hammer to level blows against Western civilization and American society and further induce guilt as a means to extract benefits from the white population. Now, of course, this has been very effective, you know, in historically speaking, in, in recent history. I mean, you can go online and you can find websites that are a dime a dozen listing black only organizations, which is perfectly acceptable because of the quote unquote needed reparation. I mean, you got black exclusive everything and white people could never get away with that. It would be right away. It would be, it would be slapped down as racist. And, and why is that? The reason is, is because of the false narrative concerning racism and slavery and the quote unquote needed reparations that white people somehow owe black people something for crimes that was per perpetrated against black people that weren't them and were perpetrated against a black community by somebody else, not us. And so. I'm just like, you know, screw that. Not about it. You know, I have nothing to repair in terms of race. I have never owned a slave. I tie my own shoes and I pick my own cotton. And by the way, you ain't never been a slave. And, you know, to accept the false... This false narrative is to accept a retarded victim ideology. And look, I've said it many times, and I say it just about every stream because this is the message. Let me tell you the way out of the matrix of nonsense. Faith in Jesus Christ, family, fidelity, children, a godly seed, hard work, responsibility, honesty, Christian community. I mean, just crushing, right? Not adopting a victim mentality, not saying, oh, because my ancestors were treated a certain way, that means I'm a victim. That's insane. That's stupidity. And when you fall for that junk, what happens is, the, is, is you allow these leftist white weirdo freaks to enslave your mind and place you in, in an ideological plantation. Straight up. And by the way, as I said already, it's not just these white cronies that do this stuff. It's these black social justice retards that perpetuate this false narrative of slavery and reparation and all this racial nonsense and identity politic and social divide all under 
the pretense of, of civil rights and social justice. It's all nonsense. Listen, you've never been a slave. So don't accept the false, retarded victim ideology. Listen, just crush. You know, my message to black people is, look, just crush. Don't fall for that junk. You know, don't fall for the, you know, the victim culture, the victim ideology, the ideology that somehow you're owed something because of how the way your ancestors were treated. All of our ancestors were treated badly. All of us. Without exception. So don't fall for that junk. That'll end you. That'll press you again into slavery in your own mind. Because if you adopt a victim, victim mentality, you're accepting, you're becoming a willing participant in your own chains. And that's the whole point. And so my message is, listen, don't fall for the victim mentality. Just crush. You know what I mean? Love God. You know, get married. Have a family. Raise your children. Raise a godly seed. Have community. You know? Be responsibility. Work hard. Have vision. You know? Accomplish goals. Crush. I mean, screw all that victim mentality nonsense. Don't fall for that. It's so stupid and it's so retarded. It just is. I mean, and by the way, none of us are exempt from it. This victim culture is, as we talked about last night, it's just running right down through and it's trying to, every, it's trying to nail everybody. But don't fall for it. And, you know, today, you know, you hear all sorts of insane rhetoric about past slavery in the United States, but silence concerning the slavery that still exists around the world, like in many Arab countries in Sudan and Nigeria and so forth. And so... Why so much propaganda from our higher educational institutions and liberal media, media concerning slavery? You know, this stuff is propped up. This false narrative is perpetuated by National, National Geographic, Time Magazine, New York Times, all the leftist media. It's going on across almost every college campus across America. Our institutions of higher learning, they're, they're, they're washed out. I mean, they've been taken over by this nonsense. And so what you have is an unending dumpster fire of nonsense concerning people who are no longer living and are beyond our ability to help. Why focus so much on people who are no longer living and we do not have the ability to help them and give no attention to the continued suffering and humiliation concerning slavery that still exists today? You know why? Because these people that push this false narrative, they don't care. They don't care about people that are enslaved. It's all just an instrument of manipulation to accomplish an end that doesn't have anything to do with racism, slavery, or discrimination. They simply don't care. You know, all the race baiting crowd, you know, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, Eric Dyson, Sean the Cracker King, you know, and the rest of them are a bunch of parasites that exploit the black community under the pretense of civil rights and social justice, but it's all nonsense. You know, anybody willing to do a fourth grade investigation can see the bias. No coverage or concern for contemporary slavery. No historical analysis is presented concerning, you know, the much larger number of Africans enslaved by Islamic countries. No mention of the vast number of Europeans enslaved in Islamic countries and European countries historically. Did you know, fun fact, at least one million European whites were enslaved by North American pirates between the years 1500 and 1800. You'll never hear that because it does not fit the false narrative PC agenda. No mention of the fact that European whites were still being sold on the auction block in Egypt years after the Emancipation of Proclamation in the United States. The selling of white slaves in North Africa was not prohibited until 1885. Did you know, another fun fact, that the etymology of the word slave comes from the enslavement 
of white Eastern Europeans who spoke Slavic. That's where it comes from, Slavic, Slav, slave. And listen, there is no region or geographical area that historically has been exempt from being enslaved or enslaving others. Asians, Polynesians, you know, China has been described historically as one of the largest and most comprehensive markets for the exchange of human beings in the world. Did you know historically there were more people enslaved in India than in the entire Western Hemisphere? And so in short, slavery was a well-established institution all over the world before Columbus's ships ever arrived on North American soil. Fact. But you don't ever hear about that. Why? Because it does not suit these race criminals' exploitive agenda. That's why. And you know, the reason why I say race criminals is because it is absolutely criminal, immoral, and evil to exploit a historical evil for contemporary gain whether it be for the purpose of financial gain or for the purpose of accomplish, accomplishing some quote-unquote social change. And, you know, the false narrative of slavery concerning slavery is not only found in the minimization of its scope historically, but also in the false claim that slavery grew out of racism. False. That is not true historically. And, you know, these two things, of course, conspire together for the, I guess you could say, the instrumental use of deconstructing Western culture and inducing guilt in order to extract benefits from white people. That's, that's, what, that's, that's what they do. And so what is racism anyways? Racism is essentially the arbitrary... Essentially, what racism is, is it's to arbitrarily ascribe attributes to a person based upon their skin color or their ethnicity. And to ascribe guilt to someone for crimes perpetuated that they had nothing to do with based on their skin, co skin color, that is racism. For someone to tell me that I owe somebody else something for a crime that I had nothing to do with because my skin is white. That is racist. And you know, the idea that I am responsible for reparations with respect to black people or Native American people because simply because I am white, that's retarded. Not about it. And you know, if you try to come and take what belongs to me and what belongs to my family under the pretense that because I'm white, I am responsible for, for historical evil. I'm responsible for some sort of reparation. The only type of reparation that you're going to, that you're going to be needing is medical or treatment from the bullet hole suffered for trying to take from me what belongs to me and does not belong to you. Get out of here, sucker. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you want to hit me with some comments, I'll try to track those as we go. And, you know, there's also a biological element to racism. It's called essentialism or biological essentialism. And that is the supremacist idea that, you know, that, you know, race supremacy. And it's not exclusive to white people historically. There's been black supremacists, white supremacists, all, you know, supremacists all through a plethora of cultures historically all around the world. And you know that you know biological essentialism essentially to teach that the scope and quality of a person's character and personhood is determined by their race. That's vile and that's wicked. And I stand against that junk with every fiber of my being. You know, and the contemporary idea is that because I am white I am inherently evil and oppressive, but it's all nonsense. I just saw a YouTube video today, and they're all over YouTube, that white men are inherently evil, that the number one evil 
in American culture is white males. Well, guess what? I'm a white male and I say, screw that. And if you believe that, screw you. You're retarded. It's all a bunch of nonsense. And of course, we can extrapolate that to any race. You know, if anybody wants to maintain that because of somebody's sin color, we have to ascribe certain attributes to them. That's racist and that's retarded. And by the way, most people are over that and people ain't going for that. So don't fall for the false narrative. Now, historically speaking, you know, racial differentiation with respect to racism is historically is mostly irrelevant. You know, people were enslaved because they were vulnerable, not because they looked different. You know, before the modern era, by and large, Europeans enslaved Europeans, Asians enslaved Asians, Africans enslaved Africans, indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere enslaved other indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere. And slavery, historically speaking, was not based on race, much less on theories about race. <clears throat> Only Relatively recently in history did enslavement across racial lines occur on such a scale to promote an ideology of racism, which, by the way, the ideology of racism has outlasted the institution of slavery itself. And so there are historical factors that explain the connection between slavery and racism. And listen, most people don't know this and they don't understand this. Why? Because... They've been indoctrinated with a false idea concerning the connection between slavery and racism. But the historical, act, the historical factors that explain the connection between slavery and racism are as follows. Two, the abolition of slavery in the West. You know, the, aboli the abolition of slavery in European nations prior to the Emancipation of Proclamation in the United States, which led to Africa being the main exporter of slaves. What happened is there was a social revolt against slavery in the European West. Slavery was abolished. And so the number one exporters, exporters of slaves became Africa. And that's how you ended up with the white-black distinction in the United States. And, you know, a historical de detail that is never mentioned should be noted. And that is that prior to the emancipation of, of proclamation in the civil war leading up to it even during it there were thousands of black slave owners in the south in the united states but you'll never hear that in fact there was a time before the civil war that in the south there were more black plantation owners and slave owners than white plantation owners and slave owners but you'll never hear that. Now, another reason that explains, another historical factor that explains the connection between slavery and racism is that leading up to the Emancipation of Proclamation and the Civil War, moral indignation and opposition to slavery had grown so strong in America, you know, based upon, you know, the Declaration of Independence, which said all men are created equal and were endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights. And so of course there became there 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 developed a cultural and civil revolt against slavery that was so strong that necessitated that advocates of the slavery advocates of slavery in the south develop a pro slavery apologetic which was large which was largely done on racial grounds. Now, this is a sad historical truth. Essentially, it went something like this. Now, this is part of, this is part of the sad history of America. And by the way, it wasn't only white people propagating this nonsense. It was black people as well. The entire pro-slavery community. So what happened is the anti-slavery movement was predicated on the notion that all men are created equal, as stated in the Declaration of Independence. And so what happened in the South is this pro-slavery apologetic began to develop 
which communicated the idea that slaves were less than human and therefore did not deserve equal rights. Sad but true. And so this is where the connection between race, r racism and slavery developed. The abolition of slavery in Europe, making, the, making Africa the number one exporter of slavery around the world. That's the first factor. That's where this black-white distinction was developed because all of the slaves became to be, came to be ex exported from Africa almost exclusively. And so all the slaves being imported into the West were black slaves. And the second part is the pro-slavery apologetic that developed in response to a movement to, to abolish slavery in the United States. So in no way was slavery the cause, or excuse me, in no way was racism the cause of slavery historically. Only late in the history of slavery did racism become an issue and did racism or race become an attempted means to rationally or morally justify slavery. And so to make racism the driving force behind slavery is to make a historically recent factor the cause of an institution which originated thousands of years prior. And you know, the enshrinement of racism as an overarching you know, causal factor of slavery is historically false. It is nothing more than, you know, an agenda driven, agenda, agenda driven social manipulation. And so, you know, the form of slavery that has been inculcated into the minds of the West would be something akin to that which is presented in the book made, you know, the book turned miniseries in the 70s. Uh, by Alex Haley called Roots. And what Alex Haley said is, he said, I tried to give my people a myth to live by. In other words, he presented something and couched it in historical language and historical terms, but it was nothing more than a myth. And if you've read the book or if, you, or if you've seen the miniseries, probably relatively few people have probably seen the miniseries because it premiered in 1976, I think, approximately 40 years ago. <clears throat> but if you read that book or you watch the miniseries, you will become dumber as a result. And listen, I'm not exaggerating my case with regard to that. You know, excuse me, of course, this sort of nonsense retards those who take it seriously. And by the way, this is the common consist consensus and basic understanding of slavery in the United States, what is presented in Roots. And by the way, to give somebody a myth or rather a lie to live by is the most retarded means imaginable to try and provide something from which people can extract practical value from, especially when the myth or the lie is an intentional gross misrepresentation or an outright lie concerning the historical facts. And you know, it's not as though myths are incapable of communicating practical truth because they can, but that's not what's going on with roots. Roots is not a myth to live by, but it is a lie to deceive people and create a false narrative and a false understanding and create a victim mentality and a victim culture in the hearts and the minds of people. And further than that, this sort of nonsense and lies divides people. It doesn't help. It doesn't bring people together. It doesn't create or induce social progress. It doesn't reduce discrimination. It doesn't alleviate any sort of social tension or racial tension. What it does is it divides people. And this is not historical awareness, but what it is, is it's social and historical upheaval, total nonsense. Fact, contrary to Alex Haley's revisionism, Africans were, were by no means the innocent people portrayed in roots, baffled 
as to why white men were coming in and taking their people away in chains. That's totally false historically. The historical truth is that the region of West, West Africa from which Kunta Kinte supposedly came was one of the great slave trading regions of the continent and was one of the greatest and well, let me say this is one of the greatest slave trading regions of the entire continent before, during and after the time white men arrived. It was the Africans who enslaved their fellow Africans, selling some of these slaves to Europeans, selling some of them to Arabs and keeping others for themselves. Even at the peak of the transatlantic slave trade, African peoples retained more slaves for themselves than they exported to the Western Hemisphere, and that is a fact. Contrary to roots, the, histor the historical facts are as follows. One, Africans were enslaved by their own people. Two, during the trade era, African Africa was ruled by Africans who established the conditions under which the selling of slaves took place. Three, European white men came to the coasts of Africa, bought their slaves, and then bounced. They were completely out of contact, contact with the actual process of African enslavement. They only saw the end result of it, which was enslaved Africans being sold by their own people on the, on the African coasts. And four, white men did not defy African rulers and African armies by just rolling through and capturing African people and enslaving them willy-nilly. That is false. That did not happen. Now, having said that, I'd like to add another thing. Not only has the true scope of slavery been ignored and the illegitimate enshrinement of racism as the causal factor of slavery been propagated, but there also has been a fierce agenda to ignore the historical details concerning how slavery ended. You just won't hear the truth of the matter. And you know, no institution of comparable age and worldwide, worldwide scope has ever disappeared over almost the entire planet, leaving so little awareness of how and why it vanished or so little interest in the question. You know, the abolition of slavery, the destruction of elaborate systems and institutions for the ownership and sale of human beings was a bitter worldwide struggle which lasted for more than a hundred years. And there were two main historical factors that led to the abolition of slavery in most of the world. First was the, was the development of strong societies which made slave raiding difficult. Strong societies developed so you couldn't just come in, put people in chains and carry them off. That's the first factor. And secondly, the development of an anti-slavery ideology, which began in the 18th century, in 18th century white Britain under the influence of Christianity. And, you know, ending slavery was a very difficult process requiring deliberate and sustained action for many generations. And, you know, while slavery was common to all civilizations, only one civilization developed a moral revulsion against it and that was white western european christian civilization but you'll never hear that this is all ignored because it does not suit the contemporary anti-west anti-white ideological agenda you know abraham lincoln said if slavery is not wrong then nothing is wrong but the hard fact of the matter is that for thousands of years Slavery was simply a non-issue, even among religious thinkers and moral philosophers of civilizations all around the world. You know, there is no historical evidence to support any other fact than the fact that slavery 
first came under serious attack by white Christian Europe. That is a fact. You know, white Christian Europeans became the destroyers of slavery all around the world. Not just in European societies or European offshoot societies overseas, but in non-European society as well, over the over bitter oppositions from Africans, Arabs, Asians, and others. You get these comments. I remember the first day. Let me pull this up. Well, actually, I can't I can't pull it up because I can't read it very well. Let me try. I remember the first day that public school I was going to had a black girl come to Andrew Jackson School in the mostly black neighborhood with news, media, and a guard to protect her. Interesting. That was in 1960. I believe there were whites only signs in every place of business. Yeah. I mean, we had, you know, all the Jim Crow laws and all the segregation, all that stuff. I mean, that that's the historical reality. And, uh, you know, a lot of people live through that, but very, very few people still around today actually experience that at any rate, there's no historical evidence to support any fact other than the fact that slavery first came under attack, under serious attack by white Christian Europe. And that is a fact against serious opposition from African people, peoples in the, in the, in the continent of Africa vehemently opposed to the abolition of slavery in Arab countries, Asian countries all around the world. <clears throat> in the effort to abolish slavery, it was essentially, this is a historical, this is a, a historical fact. And the effort to abolish slavery, it was essentially a white, it was essentially white Western Christian civilization against the world. And that is a fact. At the time, Western civilization had the power to prevail against other civilizations. And that is how and why slavery was destroyed as an institution in almost the entire world. Now, clearly, this These historical facts are not politically correct in today's term, but rather these historical facts are simply ignored and people pretend as though they never had, as though it never happened. And, you know, take it for what it's worth tonight. And of course, in no way am I implying that there was that there was unanimous consensus concerning the abolition of slavery because there wasn't, and I'm not implying that. Both white people and black people in the West opposed the abolition of slavery. That is true. Nor am I implying that black people did not participate in the abolition of slavery because they did, especially in the Civil War. But it is nevertheless the case that the driving force Politically, financially, religiously, even sacrificially, concerning martyrdom and so forth, the driving force behind the abolition of slavery was white Western Christian men. And that is a fact. Let me hit this comment. While that's true, only the Bible, a Christian worldview, can create and sustain a civilization without slavery. Fact. Now, I want to commend to you guys. Let me pull a picture up because because we're done tonight. But uh, for your own study, let me uh, bear with me a second because I didn't have this prepared. But I want to pull a pic pull up a picture of Thomas Sowell. Because, and the reason I want to is because Thomas Sewell is an African-American man. 
He's passed away now, but. But he has a great essay entitled The Real History of Slavery. And that uh, goes into much more detail than I went through tonight. And the reason why I want to commend that to you, and by the way, he was an economist and a historian, not a Christian, but uh, a great scholar. And uh, that's Thomas Sewell. And he has an essay. It's a, it's a relatively long essay. And the reason it's long is because it goes into tremendous detail concerning the historical development of slavery and so forth. And he does a great job of correcting many of the misconceptions that, that I touched on tonight. And the reason why I want to pr present that and commend that to you is because sometimes when a white guy like me, you know, presents these historical facts, you know, it can kind of fall on deaf ears. You know, just, you know, of course you're going to say that you're, you know, you're just a white dude or whatever. And so I'm going to put it in the comments right here. Let me type this into the comments. Thomas Sowell, and it's, I think it's called The Real History of Slavery. The Real History of Slavery. So I'll put this up real quick, and then we're going to get out of here. Thomas Sowell, The Real History of Slavery. Excellent, excellent essay. I commend it to you. You could, you could probably read it in, I don't know, depending on how fast you read, you could read it in two or three or four hours, depending on how fast you read, but I highly recommend it. So anyways, appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. Appreciate the support. God bless you. Uh, like and share, subscribe, share the video. Um, uh, share the video all across the webs. And uh, I'd appreciate it. So we're going to get out of here. Christ servant of assassin. We bots to be out. Appreciate the love and support. Comment, like, share, whatever, you know, do your thing. And uh Soli Deo Gloria. We're out. It's Christ servant of assassin. Truth stay shining. Busting on you wizards so the truth stay kind. Christ servant of assassin. Truth stay shining. Busting on you wizards so the truth stay kind. Christ servant of assassin. Truth stay shining. Busting on you wizards so the truth stay kind. Christ servant of assassin. Truth stay shining. Busting on you wizards so the truth stay climbing.